How we doing everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Half Italian Podcast. I'm your host, Marcus Saputo. And I'm out of breath already. Alright, I had to reach over, turn this camera on. Uh, we're back in the studio. The consistency we got going on with this thing is already, I mean, it's next level, okay? I mean, I said in the last podcast we did the bandit. We got more pizza boxes. We got salvos up, all right? If you're in Nashville, go to salvos, okay? You can take it from this Italian. They got it. You understand? Uh, it's about the sauce, you know? The cheese and the sauce and the bread, which is what makes up a pizza, right? And if you're out here doing pineapple pizza, I'm not friends with you. You understand? We can't be friends. But uh, it's, it's all about the good sauce, the good cheese, you know? I go to a place here called uh, Jet's Pizza. And it's not bad, you know? I mean, the dude, the Jet's logo, you can, I'll, I'll look it up. The Jet's Pizza logo is like an Italian dude going to space, all right? Jets, oh shit, Jets Pizza. Let's see if we can get this logo up here. It's on a pizza box. It's not something that I would hang up in the studio, you know. But I'll tell you this, it's not bad. It's it's your regular pizza, you know. I mean, this dude looks crazy as hell. Let's see. We gotta go to photo, see if we get a photo of this guy. Here we go. I don't even know what this guy's got going on. I mean, look at this guy. That's Jet. Okay. Now, they don't got bad pizzas, you know. It's like your traditional. I mean, it's better than Domino's and all of that. That's for sure. But, I mean, this guy looks like... I don't even know what to say about this guy. He's got, I mean, <laughs> I think he's got a jet pack on. Is that what it's? Jets, right? Look, he's sending this pepperoni to the moon guy. So, Jets is around here in the Nashville area. They got a good pie. It's more traditional, like I said. You want some good stuff? Salvos, alright? Salvos has got it. So, uh, that's what we've had going on. Getting pizzas. And, you know, sometimes I wonder, you know, as an Italian, I, I eat pizza like twice a week, at least, alright? You know, leave a comment. How many times a week do you do pizza? Because I'm doing at least two a week. Sometimes I'll be doing, you know, a little bit of... You know, I'll do some gnocchi. I'll make some gnocchi myself. Things like that. But uh, they got Trader Joe's. If you want some good gnocchi, you go to Trader Joe's. They got it. You get some gnocchi from there. And you get uh, some marinara. Some sauce. They got it. Trader Joe's makes like their own sauce, you know? So, that's what I've been up to lately. Pizza. Been making a lot of phone calls. We've been uh, working on getting an agent and doing, you know, get some more casino dates. January 6th, going to be with the Bandit, Kansas Crossing Casino, you understand? So, excited for that show. Going to have a big old billboard, billboard with the Bandit on there. So that's exciting. And, uh, yeah, last cast we had the bandit on. The dude's my best friend. Funny guy. If you have not been to one of his shows, go to his shows. He's an entertainer. A straight-up entertainer. Okay? It's not no stand there with a microphone and tell jokes. I mean, this dude is crazy on stage. Which is what I like to see. You know? So, yeah. That's what we got going. I'll tell you this. I, uh, I've been helping this guy build this back porch so it's like pre-built, 
back porch and you you put it up I mean there's a lot to it but we was putting this gutter up on this thing and I had this tin gut I mean it's it's not a regular it's like sheet metal gutter this thing fell on my head guy like twice the amount of times I was falling off the ladder hanging on to this thing is just it's ridiculous you know some of these things they're not the easiest, you know. These jobs, and it's like uh, it's super, it's slick on the top. So you have you fall, you slide off of this damn thing, all right. But it's good. We got it set up. Uh, built some steps, you know. Did a ceiling fan. So you know, business has been good. Staying busy with the handyman side of things. Um, what else we got going on? I'm going to go to Zany's tonight. It's New Material Monday. Uh, so we're going to go check that out again. I'll tell you this, Zany's is cool. You know, I really like being there because there's ten, I, it's not only the comedians I like watching, but it's the, oh boy, I don't know who that is trying to figure out if these phone calls are spam or like the 900 phone calls I've been making if it's from one of these like an agent or a venue so not so certain um so uh, oh I was talking about the talent so just like with the music uh the music is super cool I like being around the artists you know I talked about this on the last one, but it it's a big difference. When you move, say you're an artist, you're a singer, comedian, uh, painter, whatever. When you move into an environment where they got it, it's, it's, uh, it's a big deal. You know, it changes a lot, you know. Even like with this, I'm more inspired and motivated to do the podcast, to go out to do comedy, you know. So, uh, if somebody on here is an artist, I highly consider changing your environment to where it's better. If you're a painter, I don't know where you go, New York or something, where they appreciate art. Because there's, uh, I saw this thing online one time, it was like this violinist who was like the, you know, they, they played like one of the best violinists in the world. They went busking in the New York City subway. Which, busking, for those who don't know, is like when you go on the street and play your guitar for money, right? They went into the subway and played the violin and, like, got no tips, nobody paid attention, all of this. And they're, like, the world's best violinist. And the the point of it, it said, like, the caption or whatever was, like, uh, your environment... Uh, you gotta move to where people appreciate your talents. No one in the subway, you know. It's 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 about your environment. So, what I'm saying is I'm fucking pumped to be over here. You know. Uh, yeah, it's it's a big change when you go from like, all right, here's and then it's like, oh, people, this is actually possible around here. You know. So that's helpful. But, um, so yeah, I've been excited about that. Uh, what else we got? I, I did go to some open mics, and, uh, it's not that I'm better than open mics at all for one second. But, man, sometimes it's tough. I'll tell you that. When you got someone up there talking about, to be frank, they don't know what they're talking about, you know? I mean, and why we've all been there. I've been there. So I'm not shitting on it. I'm just saying it gets a little rough with some of the sets you got to listen to. Where, you know, it's maybe not more people's natural talent is. There was a guy who was, uh, 
his profession was a balloon. He did the balloons, right? He made like like the little dog balloon. Make the little hat balloon. You know, it's got like a unicorn coming out the front. And he went up there and did some jokes and you know. It was what it was. So I feel bad. I don't mean to talk shit on nobody. But it's it's like, you know, I can't sing. It's the th I'm not going to go up and try to sing because I know I can't sing. So I think it's more of a self-awareness thing. It's like I know I'm never going to make it in the music industry unless I'm like, I don't even know, a producer. Even that, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So it's like, you know, knowing where your strengths are and then going into something. But you got to try shit too, you know? I'm not saying don't try nothing because you're never going to know. You could be the best comedian in the world first time you fucking suck, as most people do. So uh, I would say it's more the people who just keep showing up. It's like, I right, maybe you should direct this in a different direction. You know, that's happened to me all the time. You know, I was a sales guy. I was never, you know, I was a good sales guy, but I wasn't like number one in the company or like I was proficient, but it's like I'm not going to, that's not my thing of being like, yeah, let me be top sales guy in the, in the company. I'm like, the other guy's got way more natural talent in it, so... Why, you know, I think there's something to say where he's like, oh, work on your weakness. Do what your strengths, guy, right? Like, if you get into something, like, I've picked up comedy way faster than most people. And I'm very fortunate for that. But it's just like, it came naturally. Like, it's nothing I did, you know. I'm not some, it just happened. I went on stage first time, made people laugh. It was, and then I was like, yeah, this is it. Like, I know I can do this. Like, I had a... It's kind of like a blind confidence. Just because you know. Like, if you feel like you've done it before. And it's, you know... But I grew up making people laugh. You know. So that's kind of... The... I ain't know where the fuck I'm going with this. Here. What I'm telling you is... If you're good at something... And people tell you you're good at something... You're probably good at it. You understand? You gotta listen to what other... Well, not always. I take that back. <laughs> Do not listen to what other people, you know, say and think. But a lot of times, like, stranger, they come up, they're like, Oh, you're so funny, or I get it, you know. Oh, you're in shape, and all of this. It's like, yeah, that's 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 how you know it's your strength. Some ra random fucking guy comes up and says, Hey... You're good at this. You're probably good at it, you know? So, that's what we got going on. What else we been up to? Went to, uh... I'll tell you this. I went to, uh... They got a home goods here. And, uh... Uh... It's, you know, home goods. The, the, they got furniture and stuff. TJ Maxx runs this place. And I'm sorry. Again, call me old school. But the workforce nowadays we got going on, it's a problem. Like, it's bad. I'm sorry. I, I don't know where the work ethic went in the United States, like, people got it every now and then, but, like, even, for example, if I worked there, I'd be doing the best I, job I could, helping people out, doing whatever. I got a dog bed for Vinny, and there was no price on it, so I went up to the counter, I said, can you give me a price, and they're like, oh, let me go get a guy to go get the price, and I'm like, there was three, there was three other dog beds that are the same, and I didn't. There was no price on any of them, 
and the kid just came back. He's like, yeah, it's 19.99. I'm like, nah, I don't think it is. I'm like, that's like a $50. It's like a big dog bed. I know how much these things cost. I was like, I right, then, you know, there's no like they there's they just do shit that <laughs> they they don't care. Is what I'm saying. I went to pick up a rug that was prepaid for. I gave him the ticket and all of this. Took like 20 minutes for the guy. He's like, I I don't know where it's. I'm like, you got the pile of rugs over there. I told you the name who it's for, and they all have the the slips on them that tell you whose it is. It says the name. That's the person's rug. And I heard him tell the manager, like, I don't know, they're on the floor. I'm like, the fuck does it matter for? I don't care if they're on the floor. I don't give a shit if they're dangling off the ceiling, guy. You go get the customer's rug, all right? Fast. He's like, here you go. I was like, I'll take it from here, you know? So I'm not, I, that's just where we're at today. I don't mean to be on here bitching and moaning about the society, but maybe it'll motivate some people. Shit, we gotta get a little pep in our step around here. It's embarrassing. The work ethic, I mean, but it is, that's, that's life in general. The, the hierarchy of life. Holy shit, I'm sounding like, what the fuck is this? Am I Jordan Peterson or something? I'm in here talking about this shit? I don't know, I guess, <laughs> I guess it's just what I've been thinking about. That's just what's been going on, you know? People are, people are just like lost. There's one gal sitting on a chair. On one of the ch furniture chairs, an employee on her phone. I was like, hey, you know how much this dog bed is? She's like, nah, you gotta go to the front. I'm like, alright. I'm like, what are you do? What are you, what are you doing on this chair? Like, are you trying? Are you gonna buy this tra Like, are you gonna buy this later? Or are you just sitting down? You know? So... I think people would be surprised. You know, you work hard where you get. You know, it's cliche like, oh, work hard. But it's like, if you show, you know, people appreciate that stuff. You get, you get some pep in your step. You know, manager sees that, says, hey, this kid, he, he knows, he's got it, this kid. You know, he, maybe he'll be a manager. But too, that's coming from a self-employed guy, so it's like I've had to do, you got to do extra when you're self-employed. It's like this, you got to set up, it's a podcast, you got to do the, you know, I had to learn how to do iMovie. I don't, I'm not a computer guy. I don't like to be on the computer that often, but I learned how to do it, and then you, you know, you learn it. You set up this camera. Sounds like a lot. <laughs> I'm making it sound like it's a lot of work. Because it is. You get the light box out. You gotta, you know, upload it to the YouTube. Then your computer's got no space. And then you gotta fuck it. I put it on a hard drive. Put it on a computer. And then it's like, nah. Like the amount of, <laughs> the amount of times I've uploaded shit. Like a 40 minute video on the YouTube, but it's only 25 because my computer cut it off. Then you gotta delete the damn thing and try it over. But that's some insight on, uh, you know, any business people out there. That's the shit you go through, you know? But it's like, I didn't stop. I didn't say, oh, fuck. You know, I went and deleted some shit, re downloaded it, and uploaded it. No problem. It's like the other day, I put the fucking camera, I didn't even know, I hit the button, put it on slow-mo. I think I already talked about, it. yeah, I talked about it on the last one. Did a skit, and the whole thing's in slow-mo. I'm like, shit. 
So then you gotta go, I mean, those are the trials, all right? Normal people are just like, oh, you know, this is too much work or whatever. But if you want something, you're gonna do it. You understand? So, I'm gonna get ranked for a damn motivational podcast instead of a comedy podcast on this shit. So that's what we got going on. Really, that's about it. I did this a bit last time. Let's see what... I'm not a news person. But let's check up. Let's see what's going on in the world. I really don't look at the news. But we could see... Trump. Oh, of course. It's all about Trump immediately. It's like, do what... what a, okay. Let's go to not sports. Dude, I can't stand. I'm sorry if you're a football person. I'm not a fo I'm not a basketball. I sit, I watch it, but I got a problem when people are like, "Hell yeah, man! Fucking Steelers are playing tonight." You know, I'm like, dude. I got. We got a neighbor. They got a flag. In their yard that says, like, I suck at fantasy football. You fu- No. You ordered that? That's what you're gonna put in your yard. Like, I'm sorry. You gotta get some more shit going on with your life. The f Just post, I suck at fantasy football. The fuck is going on? You're a grown man. And you're doing, you're partaking in something that is, the, the line is fantasy. You know what fantasy is for? Children. Alright? I'm sorry. We gotta tighten up with this shit. I'm seeing too many grown men out here with the fantasy football. It's fantasy, that means it's fake. Alright? Alright? I've never done it. I don't even know how that shit works. But from the outside looking in, you're doing something as a grown man you should not give two shits about. Okay? And then like sports bar. I cannot go into a sports bar when the when the football game's going. I can't. These dudes in there, they're getting riled up, fucking yelling, clapping. You chip, do. Now I can't talk. I I watch fights, you know. I watch UFC or boxing, but like, I feel like that's a little more like. That's been around for a long time, fighting. You know, like that's a classic. People are like, well, Margaret's football's been around for a long time. You get the fuck out of here, all right? The Romans were back there, beating each other's ass. Okay. Look at this. What did I just see? I just saw something with the... Uh... Dude, I saw... It. Well, speaking of MMA, Conor McGregor just posted something with his son. Hit mitts his, his son's guy. I don't know how old this kid is, but... Could you imagine that? You get taught by your dad how to take someone down, guy? That's what's going on. But yeah, you know, so I guess I can't talk too much shit because I'm, I'm a fight fan. But if we're doing basketball and then everybody's like an analyst, like, uh, well, you know, the Patriots, they should have should have ran this play and, you know, Leroy should have. That's That just goes to show how much I know about football, okay? I'm Italian. Football is soccer, where we come from. And actually, this guy, I was doing his ceiling fan. He was watching a soccer game. So I asked, I said, what is... He's like, yeah, this is my new thing. Like, I'm watching soccer. I'm like, that's cool. Because I... And soccer is the biggest... It's the biggest thing, uh, sport in the world. Everybody can play soccer, right? You put on a shin pad, like shin pads... 
feel like that's the biggest kid sport. When I was a kid, I did soccer, you know? You can just go run, you kick the ball. You don't need shoulder pads, you know, all of that shit. Let's check out the news. Oh, speaking of Trump, though. For those of you, if you're a comedian fan, go watch Shane Gillis' special on Netflix. It's fucking hilarious, okay? I just got turned on to Shane. I haven't, like, ever watched much of his shit. The guy has fucking got it, okay? Hilarious. He's just got one of those pers... Like, for me, when I even watch other comedians, like, you know someone's got it because they got this, like... It's like a confidence, but just, like, this aura about them where you're, like... Uh, you feel their personality when they're on stage, you know? And that's like me when I'm on stage, you know, I'm a tag, it's a very prominent personality. This guy has got it. He's like white dude, you're, you know, typical, like, kind of bro. Like, I could tell the guy's been funny his whole life, talking shit with friends. Uh, so if any of you like that, check that out. And even, uh, this one, I feel like he's not that popular, but, uh, I think it's Nick Kroll. One of the funniest fucking specials. I've never been... He's been on TV and shit, but... Uh, the guy's fucking hilarious. Dude, Guy... Guy... Fieri. Dude, this guy's hair. I wish I'll have to learn how to put it on the screen. If somebody's got, he's got white spiky hair. I mean, we're talking bleached with a goatee. Let's see what this says. I feel like I'm getting old when you start to look at shit like this. That's what my dad does, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he can't see that shit. This is talking, he's the restaurant guy, right? Oh, look at him. He's standing with a big old burrito. Is that like a real... Okay. When it comes to like food critics. Like what's going on with that? Like do you... Because I feel like it's kind of subjective. You know? Like you're telling me... <coughs> this guy... Like say this guy doesn't like spicy stuff. And he eats a spicy dish. And he's like, fucking sucked. Yeah, because you don't like it. You don't like spicy stuff. Like, do they got that? Or do, are they like, they're open to any kind of food. You know? Because even though I'm Italian, you give me something with a black olive on it, dude. It's going in the trash. I ain't eating that shit. Olives... Black olives should be not allowed, okay? Sorry if I'm embarrassing any other Italians out there. Like, Marcus, you fucking... No. I can't do it. Man, this is a bunch of... Do Brad Pitt's on here? I don't know if you've seen Bullet Train. Do Brad Pitt knows how to fucking act. That's a funny movie, too. If you haven't seen Bullet Train, it's on Netflix. I fucking love that movie. It's hilarious, dude. That's what... Acting, you know, it's surprising. Like, <clears throat> I've never acted. I want to get into something. But, like, listening to actors or even, like, comedians who act, who get on or, you know, just talk about what it's like being on set. Like, actors basically sit around for eight hours to do like 30 minutes of work and it's like they just do months of that shit like the amount of like hurry up and wait in that business like i said i've never done it but from what i've listened to and heard i mean these guys it's you know people are like oh they have such an easy dude it's exhausting are you kidding me you sitting around, and then, like, if... I can't imagine, if you're playing a character, like, for example, take 
I haven't seen the movie, but like the Joker with uh, what's his name? You just know what I'm talking about. If you're playing a character like that, how to kick in and out of character? I mean, I think that guy just stays in character for three fucking months when they shoot it. I mean, you see this guy on a street. He probably looked like a crazy person because he's like, you know what? I'm staying in character because I ain't coming out because it's too hard to get the fuck back in. You know, the dude will just walk around with a painted face for three months while he's shooting the damn movie because it's just, you know. And then you realize actors like, like everybody thinks it's just like, oh, they, uh, you know. They just got all this money and they're famous. Like, they don't realize... Number one, it's a job. Like, they're hired by these companies, right? So it's not like they're, like, real... Like, they're employees, basically. And then, you know, just the creative behind it, or I was wa I'm still watching it, but... Sylvester Stallone thing. I didn't know. First of all, this guy was, like, homeless. But he wrote... He had to become a writer, like, because, no, everybody's like, ah, you're too ugly, you know, his face sagged. They're like, yeah, and so he's like, all right, well, I'm going to write my own shit with my own character. That's me, you know? And he wrote Rocky, and he, he said no to these people. He wanted to just buy it and have another actor. He's like, no. Nah, I wrote this for me. I'm fucking acting in this movie. You understand? So, yeah, it's interesting. Man, I'm just suggesting all sorts of uh, shit to watch, but that's also been good. It's interesting, you know? Everybody thinks these actors just got it easy and all of this shit. Because it's like you go audition. Like, I've applied for, you know, acting roles and shit, and it's like... You know, I emailed this guy and he's like, yeah, you know, it's for like a gym part. But the personal trainer they wanted was like 6'2". Or, you know, they need like a big dude. I'm not 6'2", okay? So it's like, you know, you don't get a role just because of your height or something. You know, like you could be perfect for the role, but it's like, it's, it's very specific on what they're looking for and even big time actors like they'll still go audition for shit right like they unless you're you know tom cruise they're like yeah you're gonna do the fucking mission impossible again guy like that's what you do right so anyways that's kind of off the but we'll see if we can get in some act acting's a tough gig you know I don't think people realize what it's, but it's crazy because some people, if you look at, uh, what movie is it? The, the one with Chaz Parliamentary, uh, A Bronx Tale. All the actors in there, I don't know if you've seen The Bronx Tale, all the actors except like Chaz and Robert De Niro, they're all from the street. Like, they weren't, they weren't actors, you know, like, they were, uh, they were just front of, front of street, and they, they could do it, you know, so it's like, uh, what's his name, I'm just fucking nailing these names here, um, Jim Carrey, the dude had, like, never acted, and, like, would go audition, and just get the part, you know, some of these people, it's just, like, talent, you know, See what else we man a lot of this is about I have not looked at any news in a long time but it's definitely <laughs> the news is so pumped Trump is back in the you know he's they can talk shit on him again <laughs> look at this Christian Ronaldo's Two million Jacob and Co. Watch. For those of you who don't know Jacob and Co. I'm a watch guy. They're, they're, you know, 
high-end watch company. Dude, they got watches that are like $10 million. I think uh, Floyd's got it. The billionaire's watch. It's like $10 million. Got a bunch of diamonds on it. That's what I'm talking about. It's crazy. I don't even know how much soccer, but I know they clearly make money. But Ronaldo, I gotta watch. Someone told me about uh, what's the other guy's name? Uh, he he does uh, he did soccer. He's the handsome dude who's like a model and stuff. Um, he's got a documentary. That uh, apparently is good. You know, a lot of these people. It's crazy because even when I was a kid, you know, you look at like people got money and all of this shit. They're like, oh, they they grew up with that or like they're bad people or whatever. Dude, most of these people, like after hearing more of like, I didn't know Sylvester's full story. The guy was like, it's not a good childhood. Like, troublemaker, all of this shit. You know, part of it is, I think that, I think there's something to that where you start, you know, you, you, you develop these strengths because of your insecurities or like, um, you know, just your childhood to compensate for the shit that went wrong, you know? So, that's pretty interesting. I don't really see no much. I gotta get some. Maybe we could do this for the five people who are watching. You could put uh, comments, and I can start talking about questions on here. Or people just trash me on YouTube. That's a lie. When I post my shorts, it gets pretty rough on here. You know, YouTube is cutthroat, man. I'll tell you that. People on here do not give a fuck <laughs> about your feelings, right? I'll post a comedy clip. Guy, you fucking suck. Where's the joke? Is that supposed to be funny? Wow, that song comedy is so, it's so subjective. You know, like, in a comedy game, I mean, I appreciate all comedians, but it's like, even me, like, I don't like real dirty comedy. So it's like, even just to watch or something. But I can appreciate it and know where you're coming from. But some people, they're like, that is not funny whatsoever. And you're like, okay. You know? But that's life. Not everybody's going to like you. Okay? And that's how this shit goes. So, I think that's about all I got. I feel like I just spent 40 minutes doing Jordan Peterson, but like the way dumbed down East Coast version, you know? Like, not the words that that guy uses. Dude, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if you ever listened to that guy. Like, half the time, I'm like, I don't know, he's using too many words, like, the guy knows too many fucking words, okay, like, he's using words to describe words that I don't know what any of them are, like, the guy's vocabulary, it's like a thesaurus, and even then, I'm like, I, what, I don't even know what the fuck a thesaurus does, okay, I don't know if I'm supposed to say, it's like, uh, I can't even think of the other one. You know, sometimes you get on here and you just can't think, alright? I'm gonna be frank with you. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. A dictionary is what I'm trying to say. Am I supposed to say it's like a dictionary at the service? Someone leave me a comment. Let me know what the fuck at the service does. About to say a fucking atlas. Where did that go, huh? Actually, you can still buy an atlas at the gas stations. That's a crazy thing, though. I, well, like, back in the day, like, my parents, their parents, think of this. 
how the fuck did you get around with no phone? Right? Like, did you ever think of that? Like, they, you get the map out. And then it's like to go to a restaurant to get, you ask the locals. You go to the gas station, where's the best steak at? Go down to Broadway Street, take a left. There's a place called Joey's. They got it. And you would just trust them. You don't know this guy. You know? Like, I would trust this guy. And it's like, this guy could love olives. And I fucking hate olives. And he's sending me to Joey's. Which only serves olives. You just had to fucking wing it. You know? Respect for that, though. So, uh, yeah, I think that's all I got for today. Looks like we did pretty good, you know? I'm staying consistent with this shit, all right? I'm not fucking around. Probably gonna have to band it on again. We're definitely gonna have to band it on again. I got other comedians in the queue. I'm gonna see who I want to call and uh, put on the show. So, Follow me on my social medias. I don't have a shirt in here, but if you want some merch, I got Forget About It t-shirts, all right? You can get them on my website. They got an Italian flag. It says Forget About It. That's my merch, all right? So, you can check that out. And uh, I think that's about it. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.